What is going on, my broskies? My name is Totski back again, and to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So today, we're going to be talking about the Japanese version. Um, there are some new characters, as you can see. We've got the uh, Ichiji, Niji, and Yonji, as well as a brand new Reiju. Reiju is confirmed to be the brand new treasure map on JP. Uh, of course, Global and, and, and Japan typically ha are now releasing their treasure maps around the same time now. Um, and the, the main reason why I'm bringing up this is because these characters are very good. And there is, I wouldn't say it's even drama, but th there's been a discussion point brought up about these characters. And... There's like two different sides to the argument and I am, I'd say, opposed to the majority, but we'll see how, how it is anyway. I'll give my thoughts and opinions about it. You let me know down below in the comment section on where you fall on the certain topic. And then also there's new Limit Break expansions that I want to touch up on as well because the, the new Limit Break expansions on JP are very interesting. So let's get into it. So first of all, we're going to discuss the TM unit. So we've got the TM Rare Recruit Yonji on JP. Now, the specials, whatever. The main talking point here is the support effect. So the support effect, once per adventure, when the supported character triggers their special, it reduces two turns of damage threshold, and it only attaches to the character that is the TM unit, which is Reiju. Um, so that's very good. That is a really good support effect, and Yonji is the uh, the easiest one to pull. I believe he'll be guaranteed on multi number two. Um, so there we go. There's the Yonji there. Then we have Niji. So Niji, love the artwork. His support effect, once per adventure, when the enemy does a special rewind, he will go ahead and give you two turns of cooldown to the Reiju character. I don't like that support effect as much because I don't... Well, personally, I don't really know if there's any Reijus that reduce cooldown. Off the top of my head, I don't think of one, but there might be one. I don't really know. I don't see too many situations where this is going to be useful, unless if, like, they only target one character and it happens to be Reiju. I guess that's good, but... I think that's a little too situational for my liking. And then there's Ichiji, which is the big one. So this is going to be the hardest one to pull. He's going to be the highest point booster. This guy's support effect adds 4% base stats to the character and then reduces one turn of percent damage reduction on all enemies when the supported character hits a perfect. So this is the big talking point right here. A lot of people that I've seen talk on the Discord about this, and I haven't checked the subreddit, but I just, I'm sure there's probably the same argument going on. But a lot of people are really upset about the fact that these treasure map rare recruits, which are so difficult to pull, are having very good support effects. Now, the, this is where the argument is basically come, and this is this is where you know the, the two separate sides will divide. One side of people don't like the fact that these characters that are so difficult to pull will have these very good support effects. Uh, we've we've seen it in the past with treasure map Ben Beckman, where. He's a character that is, he's not used too often, but when you do use him correctly, TM, Ben Beckman, and, and Shanks are an exceptional character. Um, if you guys don't remember, they have uh, these TM rare recruits that dropped with him. There was a Lucky Root and a Yasop when they support the Shanks or Ben Beckman character. I think it's just Shanks, I don't remember. Either way, when the character uses their special, he shuffles your empty slots, which obviously Shanks and Ben Beckman give you empty slots. So you can shuffle orbs around, and if you have multiple turns of Beneficial Orb Enable or Rainbow slots from the previous turn, you can, you can get some cool effects off of that. So a lot of people are kind of basically bringing back the same argument from then. Like, a lot of people don't like this, but I'm in the other side of the argument. I think this is a great, great thing to do. The fact is, is TM units are basically never used outside of the event that they debuted on. Most of the time, you'll never use a treasure map rare recruit. Look, there, there might be a very, very egregious circumstance where you might need to use a specific treasure map rare recruit character. But I'm saying, like, over 90% of the time, I feel tre treasure map rare recruits are basically never used outside of their debut event. So the fact is, is they're going to be giving these characters support effects that now makes them useful outside of the TM for the unit that they were meant to be farmed for. I think this is a great step forward and it gives people more of an incentive to summon for these characters. As someone that pulls on this game a lot, I actually love the fact that, you know, if I'm going to invest on a TM Sugo, I want to make sure that my gems are actually worth something. And most of the time in a TM, they're, they're, they're just not. They just aren't. The TM Sugos are not really great. The TM units are just awful, right? Obviously, for the event, they're very good. It allows you to rank higher. But outside of that, they're trash. So if they're going to do this, I mean, this one's nice, but I think this, this is a fantastic effect here. I really, really do like this. So let me know your thoughts and opinions about this whole situation. Um, you know, are you on the side of, are you against this? Are you for this? We'll see how we go. Either way, let's talk about the brand new TM unit, who is Reiju, and I've got to say, that artwork is looking spicy, my boy. Spicy, spicy artwork. She is an int powerhouse fighter. Very odd that she's int, considering uh, all the characters released within the past like couple weeks have been all quick for the release of Sugar and Smoker. So they've released an int character, but this character does work with quick teams. Let's talk about her. She is honestly one of the best TM units in the game. So her captain effect is 3.5 times attack to quicken int. 
with one turn of paralysis reduction on the crew. So this effect, the utility effect, is very similar to like Stampede Luffy, um, where he just passively reduces paralysis and despair. Very similar effect, but it's only just one turn of paralysis. But the fact is, is this unit is a flat 3.5 booster. I'd love to see this. I hope that more TM units in the future get captain effects as similar to this or even better. The fact is, this is a flat boost. You don't need to activate it like a dual unit to get those huge multipliers. This is just a flat 3.5 quickening attack booster. Very, very impressive. As for her special, what's her cooldown? 12 turns? Oh my. Okay, so it changes block to matching, reduces 5 turns of percent damage reduction and damage threshold, and then when your captain is either quick or int, she poisons all enemies. Then, for 3 turns, boost the attack against enemies with poison by 1.75 times. 3 turn boost, mind you. And then, when you hit 2 perfects, the poison- when you hit 2 perfects during the turn you launch the special, she's gonna poison all characters in the following turn. So, if you guys know anything about the Colosseum Morley, he's very similar to this in terms of the conditional part. Whereas, if you hit a certain amount of perfects, you'll reduce defense in the next turn. This is very similar, except it, it's with poison instead. This is fantastic. You can carry this through multiple different stages. You can poison stage 4, hit a couple perfects, poison stage 5, you got a conditional boost in multiple turns. It's amazing. This is a great special effect. On top of the fact, when you do launch it, block orbs are getting removed, and you're reducing two of the most annoying defensive effects in the game. I love this unit. This is honestly one of the top treasure map units in the game, in my opinion. Plus, she's powerhouse, so that's also very good. Um, so, talking about her sailor effects, uh, stat boost to quicken int, reduces one turns of paralysis. Wow, that's great. So, all, all paralysis are reduced by one turn. Um, her support effect is stats, which is nothing impressive, and then she's got her PvP abilities. But the fact is, is that is a, that is a really good special, and a flat 3.5 captain. Like she is going to see play, like 100%. She's definitely going to be seeing play, and uh, I love the fact that it's Reiju because Reiju uh, is looking freaking mighty fine. I'm just really pissed off because Reiju was one of the characters that people could vote for for the legend selection. Sugar was the one that won that legend selection, who we now have as a legend in the game. Reiju could have been the legend. Oh man, it would have been so good to see Reiju as a legend. I hope she gets one in the future. I digress. Let's talk about the Limit Break expansions to Legends. So, Borsalino is the first of these. Uh, Borsalino, for those of you who don't know, um, Borsalino is essentially one of the worst Sugo Fest exclusives in the game. Even after his Super Evolution, he was completely unusable. But let's talk about what he does normally. So, he does two turns of cooldown at the start of the fight. He gives you two times attack and uh, boost recovery by 1.35. So, that is a pretty good recovery boost, but two times attack flat is pretty bad. And then during the stage, you activate the special, you get a 3.5 times attack boost only for that one turn that you use the special so let's have a look at what they've done his new captain effect upon limit break expansion will go ahead and state reduces all cooldowns by two at the start of the fight which is unchanged boost the attack of all characters by 3.5 and then boost the recovery by 1.35 if you use his special in the same turn it's going to be a 4.25 times attack boost instead uh, that's a pretty impressive uh, increase from what he previously did. Uh, the fact is now is that it went from 2 times to 3.5 and then went from 3.5 to 4.25. Now, is he worth spending a key and all the materials to limit break expand him? Obviously not. But either way, I think it's a great upgrade. And it is nice that finally he gets some sort of buff in all the time that he's been active he should have definitely received a limit break expansion many many months ago even nearly years ago to be honest and honestly we just deserve a v2 kizaru at this point i don't know why we haven't got one yet let's talk about v2 kuzan so v2 kuzan uh he was a character that did not receive a limit break expansion for the longest time finally got one now um let's talk about what his captain effect does right now so currently he is a 3.25 captain to quicken sai 1.35 health and then we'll go ahead and make it quick inside orbs beneficial to quick inside and then boost the attack of quick inside by 4.0625 after you hit in the chain of sight sight quick so this is one of the most annoying parts of him and unfortunately this does not change upon the uh, limit break expansion but he gets a buffed captain effect nonetheless so now he gets minus two cooldown by the way uh what is his normal cooldown at so he goes down to 12. Wow, that's that's pretty impressive, actually. But his captain effect is now a 3.5 base from 3.25. So not much of an increase there. And then he gets 4.375 uh, rather than the 4.06. So yeah, he just gets minus statistical upgrades. Uh, but the additional cooldown is definitely um, 
a well needed buff I feel 14 turns is kind of annoying so 12 is a great buff to him so that's pretty good and then the last character is Bluebeard uh, Bluebeard is one of the most underrated characters in the game and it's even with his 6 plus and now he's got limit break expansion like, Quickbeard just keeps getting buffs. Like, I feel like they see the stats and no one's using this guy and they're just trying to buff him as much as possible because Quickbeard right now is even more impressive than what he already was. So currently right now, what is his, what is he looking at? Uh, he is one turn at the start of the fight is reduced of cooldowns. Boost attack of powerhouse and strikers proportional to your crew's current HP, 4.5 at max. So this is what the difference is with him. He started off at 3.25 times, and then when you're at 1 HP, it's 4.5. So 100% is uh, the lowest, and then at 1 HP, you're at your highest attack boost. You get zero recovery as well, 20% damage reduction. I, th I still think this is a great captain effect, but now it is slightly upgraded. He gets the added effect now of reducing specials by two turns at the start of the fight. Boost the attack of Powerhouse and Strike is proportional to Kuru's current HP. 3.75 times at full HP. 4.5 at 1. So the, the, the high part, so 1 HP, that is unchanged. But when you're at full health, 3.75 times? Are you kidding me? Like, uh, even if you're at half health, you're still at like, what, uh, 4.1 or 4.2 times multiplier? No, yeah, probably a bit higher. Yeah, about that. Yeah, 4.25 multiplier. That's pretty ridiculous. It's pretty ridiculous, right? Um, also, 20% damage reduction. You still get zero recovery, which kind of sucks. Minus three cooldown. I didn't even see that earlier. He goes down to 10 turns. Bro, you can't tell me this is not a good limit break expansion. This is nuts. Holy, dude. Quickbeard just continuously getting buffs out of nowhere, dude. And then Legend Kara gets a buff as well. I mean, she doesn't get a buff captain effect, but she does get minus two cooldown. I actually have no idea what her current starting cooldown is. I feel like it's 12? I want to say 12. So what is it currently right now? It is 12 turns. So it goes down to 10 turns. Wow, dude. Like, this is such an impressive batch. Now, of course, no one's using Borsalino. V2 Kruzan doesn't see that much play anymore, but he is still good on paper. This is impressive, and this is a, a really, really good buff. So I, I love this. I love the Limit Break expansions, and obviously the new Raju is fantastic. So there we go. That's the rundown of all the news that just dropped on JP. I wanted to make a video for you guys because I got really excited when I started reading some of the stuff that Whitebeard was doing, uh, and I wanted to talk about this whole thing with the uh, support effects on TM units and... Just wanted to see your thoughts and opinions on that one. But either way, that's going to wrap up this one today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.